Teacup Writer here with a kind of different video that I'm gonna do. Um, today I'm not going to be unboxing anything or showing you a new product, but I'm just gonna be going over my various fountain pen collection. I'll just be giving um, kind of introduction of how I got into fountain pens um, and just go one by one um, with the pens that I have in my collection. Um, what purpose do they serve? Um, how do they work for a left-handed writer? and uh, just a bunch of other things. If you are um, new to this channel, I do try to post regularly um, contented videos for uh, writing, books, and stationary uh, equipment. Um, if you are interested in that, you can subscribe below, um, like this video, or leave a comment. Um, people have been so generous with their feedback, and I welcome um, more voices to the fountain pen community. Um, uh, yeah, that's it. Let's get into the video. All right, so here is my collection. This probably stretches back to about five years ago when I got my first fountain pen um, at the checkout station at a Barnes & Nobles, which is this uh, Varsity Pilot. Um, initially, I uh, used this thing and it was the most terrible writing experience I've ever had. Um, it didn't work right. Um, it was dry, scratchy, and I didn't like fountain pens at all. Um, now, I understand now that um, these things probably sit at the cash register for years and the weird person, myself included, might pick one up. And looking at it now, it looks like it's a medium nib. Well, it wasn't medium at all and this was just a terrible pen. Now these are not refillable, so they're disposable by nature. So I understand, um, you know, they're a couple dollars, they're nothing super crazy, but um, it was not a good pen. And so I stopped at all, or altogether using fountain pens, and I moved on. Um, then a couple years later, about uh, probably two years ago, for my, uh, as a birthday present, I was given this pen, which is the Waterman Expert. Um, and I was just reintroduced to fountain pens. And uh, the, fen the pen was so cool, it came with its own cartridge. So right out of the box, I was already using it. It was a very different experience than I was when I was used to um, with uh, just normal ball points and uh, rollerball pens. This one um, had ink and being left-handed, I had to slow down write a different way so that my hand wasn't dragging the ink across the page. Um, but yeah, I got this as a gift um, and just an altogether great pen. It is a fine nib and this is really what kicked off my, um, I, could, I guess you could call it obsession with fountain pens. Um, and after buying this pen, or excuse me, after getting this as a gift, it prompted me to pick up one of these and this is just a Twisby Go. Um, I first saw this pen on um, a YouTube channel, uh, Writerly Witterings. Um, he uses these kinds of pens um, to test inks because they're so cool. Um, they're very easy to fill. They have a piston on the back so you can just lift ink that way. Um, he does multiple ink reviews on a video, so it's nice just to flush the pen and get a different ink in there pretty quick. Um, for me, left-handed, I don't know if this is a great pen. I have used it um, quite a bit, um, but it does tend to run out pretty quick. Um, you could probably get maybe eight or ten pages out with a fill, um, which is fine. But when I'm working on a novel and I'm writing long, a lot of longhand, um, it is kind of uh, troublesome to have to fill it so every so often. But the cool thing about these are there are many different colors and they're extremely affordable, very cheap. Um, they're disposable. Uh, the have di they have different nib sizes and in the nib you can just take off and put a new one on, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I bought this pen and then. I saw this one, and this is a Norwal. Um, I got this from, uh, I believe, Galen Leather. It was like a, like a one of a hundred pens that they had done, and I just saw, it and I was just really um, interested in the way it looked. It was um, 
by far a fancier pen than I was used to. And it this one is a uh, a piston fill, so there this back part on fills, and then you twist it, and it fills the uh, ink chamber, which there's a little ink window here. Most of these pens are empty because I don't keep them inked all the time. But I remember getting this one, and it was just heavier. Um, unlike the other ones, this one screws in. It just felt more, uh, it felt more uh, elegant than what I was used to. These other ones were kind of more just a very entry-level basic pen, and this one kind of introduced me to, um, I believe this is a medium nib, and just a fancier um, side to fountain pens, obviously. I don't have an extremely expensive pen in my collection, but that's because I'm cheap. Uh, but yeah, this one was fantastic. Um, it's so uh, one of a kind, and I really do enjoy writing with this. Um, it is a little bit bigger in my hand, which is great because I have fat fingers, and that is fantastic. So after that pen, I kind of went nuts and bought all three of these pens at the same time. Now, um, these two are the Lamy Safari. They're both black, and they're both broad nib. I do have the uh, fine nib. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, I uh, want to. I also want to try the left-handed nib, but I haven't gotten around to trying it. I've just emptied both of these pens out from use, so um, that is why I haven't changed the nib until getting the opportunity to do it now. But anyways, um, I was uh, I saw these these pens. Uh, I, I think on an Instagram post, but I saw these pens and. I was like, wow, they, they're so simple, um, and they're made from Lego bricks, which is pretty cool. Uh, as a very avid Lego fan myself, I thought that was awesome. Anyways, the they're from Germany. Um, very, very smooth pens. Um, I went for a broad nib because I wanted a heavy flowing pen. Um, when you write upside down like this, uh, because the pen is typically meant to be written this way for the ink to flow out. Um, writing like this, I do get stops with other pens, but these ones never have I ever gotten a stop. Um, they're very thick flowing pens. Again, you have to be mindful of how you're writing because you don't want to rub um, the wet ink. And uh, these pens flow very well, no matter upside down writing, normal size, or left-handed, whatever. All together. A fantastic pen so fantastic that I had to buy a second one so that I could have two because what is better than having one of something than having two of something and so once I got those pens I kind of got introduced to the Caveco and as you can tell I'm trying to buy different brands of pens so I can kind of see what is out there um, some of these nibs are plated, some of these nibs are pressed, steel. I just wanted to see what different manufacturers were doing and to find something that really suited my needs. And I'll go into which pen I think is the best for me at the end. But um, one of the other brands I was introduced to, or I saw was the Caveco, and there is a very loyal following for these pens. And I'll not deny they're very... Uh, versatile they're very cool they're, they are screw pens which is another great feature um, the safaris have um, uncapped themselves and uh, it, it's unfortunate but I do prefer now having a screw pen that way I don't have to worry about le ink leaking out um, but the one of the things I was kind of uh, put off about these pens at first was that the clip doesn't come with it I thought that was kind of odd that a clip for a pen is sold separately, but for the price point, I guess you can understand why the clip isn't included. Um, these do come in a lot of different colors, just like the Safaris. They have steel version, brass version, translucent, whatever you can think of. Um, and I just went for a green. I do love army green. So I went for a basic green color. The cool thing about these pens is you can just put throw these in your pocket. I have this pen with my, um, my Lockbee. Uh, field guide, um, pocket journal as well. So I can just take it out and about. I'm not super concerned if I was to lose one of these. Um, so uh, it, yeah, it's uh, super affordable, cheap. And if you lose one, yeah, you're sad, but you'll move on. It's not like losing something uh, else like the Norwal or the, um, the Esterbrook that is coming next. 
But these ones are so cool because they are a mini pen and then you can just post them and then it's a full length pen. Um, see if I can get that to focus a bit better. Uh, yes. And uh, the only thing I would say negative about this pen is it is very small for my big hands. So uh, for, as a left-handed person, because I think this one's a fine, yeah, fine nib, um, it is difficult to write with and uh, it doesn't get as much use as the others, but it is still great pen in my collection. And then most recently, um, one of my last videos I did was on this Esterbrook SD, which is just fantastic. It is the nicest pen that I have in my collection and by far um, a favorite. I have been eyeballing um, purchasing one of these for quite some time, but again, like I mentioned earlier, I am cheap, so I do not want to pay more than $100 for a pen. Um, so Lockby was kind enough to allow me to do some uh, shameless marketing for them, uh, promoting for them which I am so, uh, so, uh, it's so easy for me to do. I love their product. So it was an easy assignment. And as a reward, I was given, um, this pen and I am so thankful for that opportunity with Lockbee. They're a fantastic company. And, um, I, uh, think I'll always, um, uh, enjoy their products because of the kindness they've showed me. Um, this pen, uh, is again my nicest pen it is thicker they do offer an oversized version of this pen which is now sold out so good luck but i'm with variants of the same estabrook sd going forward they'll have oversized versions you'll just have to make sure you get one before they sell out but this pen um i've had for only a couple months and it is fantastic i love the oversized nib on this um, this is medium. It is way larger than the other pens I have. And the cool thing is, is you can change out the nib. They have like a converter. There's, I can't find them. They do come on uh, sale periodically, but you could change out the nib to have more old fashioned Esterbrook nibs, which is pretty cool. But this pen is just awesome. It just looks great and it just writes amazing. Um, it is a daily driver pen, so I tend to use this pen more often than not. And uh, I just have no complaints. I mean, the only complaints I can really think about, if I had to give one with this pen, um, gosh, had to give a complaint about this pen, would be that I didn't get it sooner. That's the only thing I can think of. But anyways, this is five years of pens um i have a problem i know it my wife knows it so i'm tend i'm trying to kind of slim back on buying pens but um of all these pens if i had to suggest one to start your fountain pen journey i would so greatly recommend just buying a lamy safari um there's so many different options there's so many different colors and they're so cheap if you wanted to get into fountain pen, uh, fountain pens, I would recommend starting with one of these. Um, I have all of my pens, which is my most favorite. Um, honestly, you, to be very surprising, it's a tie between um, the, the Safari and the Esterbrook. Because these are so cheap and so versatile, um, they make it an easy favorite. And because this one looks fantastic, um, it's an easy favorite for me too as well. So, uh, yeah, and this is very quick. I didn't go into a lot about each pen. A lot of these pens I have reviewed individually on my channel. So if you'd like to be, uh, to see writing samples, to see unboxings and to see more in depth video of each pen, you can check those out in the, um, in my, uh, in my channel log um but anyways yeah this is uh, my pen collection of five years and we'll see where it goes in another five years hopefully i'm able to um find something uh i really am looking at a visconti but again those are past my cheap point 
and maybe one day I will just find one that is affordable. But anyways, this is, like I said, a quick video of my fountain pen collection. If you liked it, uh, make sure to leave a comment. Um, if you, if I did something um, that you want me to elaborate on, um, just leave your uh, feedback and I can certainly make a video targeted towards that comment. But anyways, thank you so much and I am super grateful for you guys and I will see you next time.